Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Final Cut Help. Today, we have a special guest on the show, Robbie Carmen, who's a colorist as well as a published author and trainer for Apple's Color. And he's going to show us something really cool today. What do you got for us? Well, Rich, one of the things that people always ask me about is creating a very stylized look where in the image we have one color that's still in color and everything else in the image is desaturated. A lot of times people refer to this as the Schindler's List effect or the Pleasantville effect, that kind of thing. And it's become a stylistic effect that a lot of people use and it's very easy to create inside of color. Now, we can do this in Final Cut, so what's better about color? Absolutely. Well, the way that we would do it in Final Cut is by using secondary color correction, specifically doing a key. And the problem when doing keys to isolate a color sometimes is that colors exist in other part of the image. So for example, if I had a yellow shirt on, well, yellow kind of exists in your skin tone a little bit too and that kind of thing. And it's a little more difficult to isolate the color you want to keep. In this example, we're going to use the secondary curves, specifically the saturation curve, to isolate just the yellow in part of the shot of this taxi cab here and then desaturate everything else. All right, let's see how you do it. Okay. so. First of all, we just need to make sure that we're in the Secondaries tab. That's the third tab over here in the color interface. And Secondaries are going to be used when you want to go after a particular color in the image. Absolutely. Secondaries affect part of the image, not the entire image. Okay. So with the Secondaries tab uh, selected, the first thing I need to do is make sure that I enable this Secondary. Um, if you don't enable the Secondary, all the work that you do won't be seen. So I'm going to check the Enabled box here. And then down here in the middle of the room, I have four tabs, my previous tabs, and then I have three additional tabs that are my secondary curves. I have the hue curve, saturation curve, and then the luma curve. The one that I want to use today is the saturation curve. Okay. Now, don't be scared looking at this interface. It kind of looks a little weird, but if you have any familiarity with, say, Photoshop or even After Effects, you might have used curves in the past. And the way that curves work in the color interface, specifically the saturation curve, is that the color spectrum is mapped left to right, red to red and it kind of circles around. Mm -hmm. And if I add a point on this curve and add, drag that point up, I'll be adding saturation at that point in the color spectrum. If I add a point and drag it down from the original shape of the line, I'll be decreasing saturation at that part of the color spectrum. Okay. So first, let's take a look at the clip that I have here that I want to actually correct. I'm just going to select the color timeline and hit the space bar to play. And this is a, some time lapse footage of Times Square in New York. And one of the things that stands out to me in this shot is the taxi cabs. They're very vibrant, they're very yellow, and I think it would be cool to have everything else desaturated in the image. I just want to know how you didn't get hit in New York standing in the middle of the street. Well, actually, this is a piece <laughs> of stock footage that I got. This is, actually comes from the nice folks over at artbeats.com, okay. and it was a very cool shot that I just had to have. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do after I enable the secondaries room is come down here into the saturation curve, and I'm going to add probably five, six, seven points on the actual saturation curve right around sort of the yellow, red, orange area here. Sure, the color of the cab. Exactly, the color of the cab. So let me make a few points here. Can you just eyeball that and sort of guess? Yeah, what I'm doing is that I'm sort of guessing where around that, uh, you know, where on the color spectrum that cab exists. We can fine tune these points as, we, as needed. So now that I've added quite a few points, what I want to do is desaturate the stuff that is not yellow or not sort of the color of the cab. And I'll do that simply by dragging the points down on the graph, like okay. so. Now, just be careful that you don't drag off the graph. If you drag a point off the graph, you delete that point. Okay. So let's continue to desaturate the rest of the does color Does it spectrum. give you any warning or does it just happen? It just happens. I'll actually demonstrate for you here. If I take the point and just drag right off, boom, okay. it's gone. Okay. So I'll click back on there. And let's add our couple points here and keep dragging down. And drag one more here. Very nice. Okay, so what you should start to see over in the preview area here is that most of the image is desaturated, except for the cab. Now, I do have some junk over here, like this planter sign and this Kodak sign, that we can actually isolate further. But the reason it's still being picked up is because it's actually the same color as the cab. Right. But let's get this... I'm sure Mr. Peanut likes being called yeah, junk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think so. So let's get this a little tighter. And the way that this works is that the closer the points are together, on the curve, the more severe your uh, correction is going to be. Okay. The further away the points are, the softer the correction is going to be. So I want this to be pretty tight, and we'll do something like that. Okay, and let's go ahead and play this. And now you'll notice as it plays through, really just the cabs are saturated. Okay. Now this is probably 90% of the look, but let's improve it even more. Let's go back to the beginning of the clip. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the clip by simply hitting the up arrow. Okay. 
and I have that. And that's better than just dragging the timeline faster? It's a little faster. It's a good keyboard shortcut. Up and down arrows navigate you to the beginning and the end of a clip. Same as in Final Cut. Exactly. So now that I've gotten sort of the bulk of this look done, what I want to do is actually switch to another tab in the secondaries room. You'll notice at the bottom of the secondaries room, I have eight tabs. This allows me to apply eight separate secondary corrections. Okay. So I'm going to actually switch to tab number two. And I'm going to click on the previous tab. And like any other secondary, the first thing I need to do is make sure that I enable the room. And I'm going to come down to the middle of the room and click on the vignette button. And let's choose a square as my shape. Okay. And you'll notice when I choose a square as my shape, it puts some on-screen controls here. Now, if I just click in the middle of the, the actual vignette here, I can position it and move it around. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is position the shape. And I can drag these little handles on the corner to resize it as well. I want to position these, uh, the shape right around the planter sign and the Kodak sign and that kind of stuff. Because there's no, no cabs driving in the sky. Exactly, and that's not the future yet. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is down here on the vignette controls is I'm going to add just a touch of softness to sort of make the, uh, the edges a little softer so I don't see them in the image. Mm -hmm. And then the last step here is that I want to desaturate everything that happens inside of the shape. Okay? So we need to make sure up here on our control pull down at the top of the secondaries room that I'm affecting the inside, that is what's going on inside the shape, not the outside of the shape. Sure. So now that I have the inside selected, I'm just going to come to my saturation parameter here and use my scroll wheel on my mouse to drag down. And you'll notice that this goes really, really slow. If you actually add the option key and use the scroll wheel, you can go a lot, lot faster. Okay. So now that I have completely desaturated what's inside the shape, you'll notice now the planter sign, the Kodak sign are now desaturated. And I've completed this look. It's so a very stylized look. You know, you're not going to use it all the time, but every once in a while it does come up and it's a very easy look to complete. Sure, you see this in spots all the time and you can use the same sort of technique to just isolate a color and boost it, like make the grass greener. Absolutely, and even more so than that, Rich, sometimes when you have a problem shot, say somebody is wearing a red shirt that's way too saturated for, to be broadcast safe, mm -hmm. you could isolate just that red and desaturate the red just a touch so it's not illegal. Great. So, Robbie, where can people go to find out more about you? Well, people can always go to RobbieCarman.net, and I've also done quite a bit of online training on color as well. Okay. So, you check out his website, Robbie Speaks. He writes books. He's got online training available from lynda.com, so you can check that out. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Final Cut Help. I know this is definitely a useful technique. Thanks for joining right. us. Thank you, Rich.